Hey subscribers, what's up? It's me, Vibs here from SlideNerd. Today, I'm going to start working with the navigation drawer. Now, it's not something very simple which can be done in a single video. There's a lot of things related to it and a lot of steps that need to be performed. Hence, it's gonna take probably more than a single video. Here, if you go to main activity, in the previous video, this is what we did. We go there, we go back, and we could navigate essentially between two different activities using the home button out there. Now let's further build a navigation drawer inside our app where we are going to download data from a JSON feed and we are going to display it in the form of a list or a recycler view if that's what I should call it in the recent times. So the first step that we got to do is go here to the specifications and take a look at what they say here in, as part of the navigation drawer. Now again the problem always arises when Google splits things apart different places. Here the first mention of the navigation drawer is inside the layout structure section here where they say if present the left and the right can be pinned for permanent display or they can float temporarily as overlays now in our case we are going to make them overlays which means this list which you see here is going to come or pop on top of your material behind over there so the content in the left nav is ideally navigation or identity based and the one in the right nav should be secondary to the main content of a page in other words you have different activities or screens in your app and you have to provide the user a way to navigate between them with the left navigation drawer and with the right one you're supposed to specify actions related to the current content out here but that is what they said over there but take a look at a very contradictory way or I should say a very ambiguous way of saying things here now inside patterns there is the talk about navigation drawer here in the material design documentation and here if you see they say the navigation drawer slides in from the left they have not mentioned anything about whether you can actually make a navigation drawer slide from right or actually should you do it in your apps now that's the one question should you which they have not answered over here and again there is metrics given here they talk about the navigation drawer having icons here the big one the small one and then they say this title here which will be 14 sp medium there's a regular one for the subheading here and of course all these uh, items inside the recycler view or list view here they have a 14 sp font and there's 87 percent alpha on it with this full 000 given over there for the colors that's the black color out there and of course these things are pretty simple you can make out the 16 of padding on phones 24 oops 24 of padding on your tablets and there's a 72 dp uh, margin edge from the left side for your items inside the list view or recycler view and again for dividers they have said that you can have an 8 dp spacing out there you can say add 8 dp at the top and bottom of every list grouping here other than that there's elevation which you don't have to worry about i think because this is given by default by your navigation drawer layout when you render it on your screen and of course there is a selection state you can use the ripple animation here to emphasize which item was selected which of course we'll be talking about as we go further in this course and other than that there is the talk about contrast when where they say that if the contrast between the selection and the item behind is not so great then you should probably use a colored way of highlighting things that the user has selected like this show in this different examples here other than that there's dividers again there's 8 dp plus and 8 dp minus it is vertical spacing out there on your divider and they say it should be a full bleed divider take a look at that all dividers in the nav drawer full bleed full bleed essentially means that you go from one end to the other end of the drawer other than that scrolling is going to take place automatically and there's nothing great about it and of course the one little thing that they have said and i probably missed is about the size of the navigation drawer the maximum width of the navigation drawer is five times the standard increment or that is 56 dp on a mobile and 64 on a tablet so given that if you do have a 480 dp screen here in drawer you should go for the second condition here where they say the maximum width is five times which means 56 into 5 which is going to turn into 280 dp so that seems to be the standard size that you can use in your navigation drawer again if i have made some mistake while calculating this you're welcome to tell me in the comments below now one more thing which they have not included right within the navigation drawer is also the point here 
under swipe to refresh if you go here to swipe to refresh and if you take a look at what they are saying here there's the part where they talk about the swipe to refresh it goes to the second point this is the one which is of particular interest right now here they say don't they say navigation drawers if present in an app contain navigation destinations not dynamic content so that arises the question that brings me up with the question whether i should load data from the internet or not now this is not compulsory that you definitely have to have navigation what if your app doesn't have navigation and what you want to provide some data which is simple of course i'm not saying that you should break the guidelines but then i leave it up to you as a debate let me know what do you think about this should you download data from the internet like in form of a list view or a recycler view and display it here the navigation drawer where they have explicitly said something about dynamic content here do let me know about this now let's move further and take a look at navigation drawer enough with the specs so there are three different styles that you can make a navigation drawer let me show you each one of them in detail so the first one is something like this where there's the toolbar and the drawer when opened comes under it not above it the second one if you take a look at us is this one over here where the toolbar is obscured when the navigation drawer opens on top of it and the third one is a little different one where the navigation drawer when opened darkens or blackens out the toolbar a bit to indicate that currently it is the item of importance over here so let's take a look at how we can build these different types of navigation drawers as we go the first steps that we need to follow to add a navigation drawer is to modify our layout files in our app. Now at this point there's a relative layout, there's this app bar here at the top and then there's a text view below it. But what we are going to need is a drawer layout. And if you are wondering what a drawer layout is, this is exactly what a drawer layout is. It contains two items inside. One is the main content which is seen all the time. Other is the content for this navigation drawer which is outside the screen towards the left normally or towards the right if your navigation drawer opens from the right side. The idea is that the main content is seen all the time and the navigation drawer overlays or comes on top of the main content when the user swipes from left to right or from right to left from here or from here out there. Now if you go to the documentation of the drawer layout you will see that they talk about the same thing here the first sentence but most importantly they say that Android layout gravity attribute is the one that controls whether your drawers emerge from left or right or you can use the value start or end to make sure. Now remember this is kind of contradictory with what we read because there was no mention of a right side navigation drawer when they talked about the patterns here inside your navigation drawer section here in the Google material design specs. Here they were only saying that navigation drawer slides in from the left. They have not mentioned anything about the right and I would still love to know from you guys what do you think about this so going further the drawer layout has two children just like we saw the main content which has a width and a height of match palette that we need to add and of course the drawer views can be added now in other words if you take a look at this image this navigation drawer is not a single view rather it's a layout and it has other views inside it so you can add all that stuff below your frame layout or the better approach is you put all these things inside a fragment layout file and you put the fragment here statically below the frame layout which is exactly what most of the apps and most of the examples show when you see them and of course you can listen to changes whether the drawer was opened or closed or whether it is still sliding by taking a look at these methods on drawer closed on drawer open with the help of the drawer layout your drawer listener that we have here and last but not the least they say the one point that we already discussed any drawers position to the left should contain content for navigating around the application whereas the ones position on the right should contain actions to take on the current content now again i'm kind of left in the lurch here by not sure by not being sure whether you can have a right navigation drawer never mind let's go ahead and put our drawer layout now at this point you definitely have a question should it be the root layout in your app or should it be inside the relative layout Let's take a look at what happens when we try both of it. Don't worry, depending on what you do, the drawer layout is going to appear either on top of the toolbar or it's going to appear under the toolbar. Let's take a look at that. Here, we simply go and we say android.support.v4.widget.drawer layout. That's the one that we want to add here. And we need to paste the entire stuff inside the relative layout. Just copy paste it and go in. And of course, 
we need to specify the width and the height for this and the XMLNS Android attribute because now that's our root here. So from the relative layout, we can take the XMLNS Android and the tools that we have here and we can put them here in the drawer layout. Next thing we do is specify the width here, saying match parent, the height here, we again say match parent, to make sure the drawer layout takes up the full available screen space. Now what we have as per their specifications is a relative layout inside the drawer layout. In other words, we have our main content, which of course here they have said that it's a frame layout, but don't worry, you can add any layout that you want to represent your main content. Well, I told you this is going to get big. So I'm going to stop here right now because anything more than this is going to be overkill or stack overflow exception in your language. So let's keep it detailed here and in the next video, I'll further continue with the navigation problem. But hey, wait a second. Before we exit, let me tell you what we are going to do or what we are up to actually. We are going to put a recycler view inside this navigation problem and I'm going to show you how to use that, how to add the view holder to it, how to handle the clicks on it and stuff like that in the upcoming videos. In the meantime, if you do like what you saw, please like this video, share this video, subscribe to Slide Nerd and let us know your thoughts in the comment boxes below. Thanks for watching. I'll catch you guys in the next video. Have a nice day.